So what do you really get for $1,000? <laughs> okay, actually quite a bit, but... To begin at the ending, our conclusion, we hurl superlatives around like they're going out of style and no company is more tuned into the consumer feel-good marketing experience than Apple. Big talk, big specs, bigger camera sensor, but at the end of this conversation, Apple's biggest advantage is familiarity. From phone to phone to phone, Apple asks precious little of their consumers to relearn the basics. Move someone over from an iPhone 5, from an iPhone 5 to the iPhone 10s and their shots will improve partly because of hardware improvements, but mostly because this is so familiar. There are zero barriers to the consumer getting the most out of how they used their phone in the past. This blessing can also be a curse though. Apple's camera app is still phenomenally unintuitive with an odd assortment of modes and options, and it still requires the user to leave the app to adjust settings in the app. Instead of improving this UI, Apple is shifting to even more auto HDR processing. It's an acceptable solution if you hold a lowest common denominator opinion of regular consumers. And this handholding often introduces as many new problems as it solves. Moving out of the iOS walled garden against Android competition, iOS users pay a significant premium for comparable performance. There is no best camera. I repeat, there is no best camera. But if you want the best example of what and how you like to shoot and are willing to accept compromises in other areas, then it's entirely likely you can find something just as good for less. If you just want the familiarity of Apple's camera app, and I don't blame people who fall into that category, but you're unwilling to relearn how the settings and options work on another platform, then you need to accept ever increasing prices from Apple. There's no correct answer here. The iPhone XS does almost everything very well, continuing to focus on the core auto mode experience. But when weighed against a $1,000 starting price, it's becoming increasingly difficult to overlook some of the significant issues found on this camera. Issues which have been declared deal breakers on less expensive phones, but Apple continues to get a pass on these kinds of concerns. We should be asking again, we should always be asking, if covering the basics well is really enough for a luxury label. You wanna see how I came to this conclusion? Of course you do, why else would you be here? Buckle up folks, we have a lot of ground to cover, and I'm gonna move pretty quick. The fourth iteration of Apple's dual camera strategy. This year, the iPhone XS is notable for moving the main camera up to a larger sensor. More surface area, bigger megapixels. This should improve low light performance and produce softer depth of field blur. We're gonna take a look at later in this video. The zoom sensor remains unchanged from the iPhone X. 